Good afternoon. The past days have been devastating for each and every Israeli. Israel suffered an unprecedented attack and the number of casualties is catastrophic. Truly unfathomable. Over the past two days, following Hamas's surprise attack on Israel, my country has suffered hundreds of fatalities. Yesterday, in the early morning of the Jewish Sabbath and on a Jewish holiday, savage Hamas terrorists fired thousands of rockets into Israel. But this was only the beginning. As rockets rained down indiscriminately upon Israeli towns and cities, hundreds of Hamas terrorists infiltrated Israel and began a barbaric pogrom, a barbaric pogrom of unparalleled magnitude. Ruthless terrorists gunned down innocent Israeli civilians in the streets, murdering anything that moved, anything. I'll show you just one example. Just look at this photo of bodies of women strewn, strewn in the street, in a bus stop. Innocents murdered in cold blood. These animal-like terrorists broke into homes, gathered entire families into rooms, and shot them point blank as if they were stomping on, on insects. Grandparents and the elderly, among them Holocaust survivors who endured the Nazis, were violently dragged from their homes, this time by Hamas, and taken into Gaza. Can you get me the photo of the Holocaust survivor? Look at this grandmother being forced to hold a Hamas terrorist rifle as he takes a picture with her. This is inhumane, inhumane. Mothers and their babies, as well as babies separated from their mothers, were brutally taken hostage. Just look at this video now. This mother is crying as she clutches her two precious babies before being put on a truck to Gaza. These are war crimes, blatant, documented war crimes. But tragically, the abominations don't end here. Hamas terrorists happened upon an outdoor party of hundreds of young Israelis celebrating the holiday weekend. These savages gunned down Jewish revelers just like Nazi death squads in the 1940s. Hundreds, hundreds were butchered, their bodies mutilated and defiled. And those who survived were taken to Gaza. Listen to this young girl screaming as she is kidnapped, separated from her friend, not knowing what fate awaits her. Try to comprehend the magnitude of this situation. Try to digest the ruthless inhumanity. I have seen shocking footage, graphic images that will forever be seared in my brain. What we are witnessing are war crimes, blatant barbaric war crimes, slaughtering civilians, abusing hostages, taking babies from their, ruth from their mothers there are no words to describe such savagery. I don't want to imagine what is happening right now to all of those innocent Israeli civilians being held captive in Gaza. 
the horrors they are enduring. Look at this, look at this and do not forget it. The horrors. This is Israel's 9-11. This is Israel's 9-11. And Israel will do everything to bring our sons and daughters back home. These images are horrifying. They are hard to see, and they are impossible to fully internalize. But I'm showing you all of this for a reason. Today, many members of the international community are supporting Israel, yes. But if history has taught us anything, we know that tomorrow that may not be the case. The international community, and particularly the UN and the Security Council, have a very short memory when it comes to Israel. The terror that we endure quickly becomes a side note. But this time, will not be the same. We will not let the world forget the atrocities our country suffered. I want you all to remember what sadistic evil Israel is currently at war with. The world must not forget what I have shown you today. Hamas is a genocidal Islamist jihadist terror organization. It is no different than ISIS. It is no different than Al-Qaeda. There is no reasoning with genocidal jihadists. They do not want dialogue. They do not want conversation. They want one thing and one thing only, the annihilation of the Jewish state. This is a direct quote from their charter. The day of judgment will not come until Muslims fight the Jews and kill them. This is the Hamas charter. And it also says that whenever a Muslim encounter a Jew, he must butcher him. That's the Hamas charter. Internalize this. They want to butcher me. They want to butcher my children, my people, and my nation. They will not stop until they murder every single one of us. And this is precisely why this atrocity is Israel's 9-11. From now, nothing will be as it was, I promise you. Today, we are shattering the paradigm. We are changing the equation. For 17 years since Israel unilaterally withdrew from Gaza, and since Hamas came to power, the world has tried to reason with these terrorists, barbaric terrorists. The international community sought to rehabilitate Gaza, giving tens of billions of dollars in aid. Friends, these funds did not go to building schools or hospitals. It was exploited only for terror. Every inch of Gaza has become part of Hamas's war machine. A war machine. And you know it. Money is fungible. It enters Gaza, and then it goes straight to building terror tunnels, rocket launch pads, missile manufacturing sites, and other terror infrastructure. Economic incentives cannot change genocidal ideologies. I repeat, economic incentives cannot change genocidal ideologies. It couldn't have worked with ISIS, it couldn't have worked with Al-Qaeda, and it doesn't work with Hamas. The era of reasoning with these savages is over, over. Now is the time to obliterate Hamas's terror infrastructure, to completely erase it, so that such horrors are never committed again. And the international community must give Israel its full support. 
Mark my words, Israel may be under attack today, but this is not only a war against or on Israel. This is a war on the free world. It is a war on civiliz civilization. Israel is at the forefront of the war on terror, and if we do not succeed, the whole world will pay the price. As the Security Council prepares to meet today, Israel has one sole demand. Hamas's war crimes must be unequivocally condemned. This unimag unimaginable atrocity must be condemned. Israel must be given steadfast support to defend ourselves, to defend the free world. Israel will not accept any false, false immoral comparisons between a savage terror group that targets innocent and the democratic state of Israel. This is not the, the comparison that the UN or the Security Council can do. There is no reconciling with genocidal terrorists. Israel will exact a heavy price on Hamas so that what we witnessed will never repeat itself. In the wake of the Holocaust, the world swore never again. This very body, the UN, was established on the ashes of the Holocaust. Yet yesterday, we watched as hundreds of Jews were massacred in cold blood. This is a never again moment. We are a resilient people and we have faced hardships in the past. We have always overcome our challenges and today will be no different. Israel will fight back and Israel will prevail. Thank you. Pamela Falk from CBS News, thank you for the briefing. Do you expect a unity statement out of the council? And if not, which countries do you think might resist that? And can you tell us anything about hostages, including Israelis and Americans and other nationalities? Thank you. What was your second question? Are there American hostages? Um, Regarding American hostages, I can get now into uh, uh, details. Obviously, uh, you know, it's an ongoing war now, and uh, we have to be responsible now and uh, double check everything, so I cannot comment uh, on this question. Uh, regarding our uh, demands slash expectations, as I said, it's hard to imagine uh, countries you know, uh, objecting or uh, our expectations, but we can never know. As I said, our only expectation is the obvious expectation that the UN that was founded, and especially the Security Council, uh, to prevent wars to fight terrorism would and will condemn unequivocally uh, the Hamas's atrocities and defend Israel's uh, right uh, of defend, to defend itself. That's it, as simple as it sounds. Thank you. Yes, please, in the back. Your name? Michelle, Michelle Kellerman with National Public Radio. Um, first of all, are, are there, um, is there evidence that either Iran or other UN member states were involved at all in the planning for this? Um, and secondly, um, uh, are you asking the UN, the ICRC, any other international organization to help with regard to the hostages? Um, we cannot, and obviously we're not going to share our uh, plans and uh, military plans and strategy uh, because it's a war and uh, we do not intend to share our uh, plans with uh, the enemy. Uh, what, what is your other question? Oh, regarding Iran. Um, let me say that, again, we don't want to share uh, intelligence. Uh, we could see in the last few weeks, uh, maybe that's a separate uh, issue to discuss, we, we, we could see the uh, supreme leader of Iran, Ayatollah Khamenei, and how he criticized uh, any, any country that wants to normalize relations with Israel, how he um, he he de declared that, that they want the annihilation of the Zionist regime as he 
uh, calls it, he tweeted uh, many anti-Semitic uh, uh, posts and tweets, and we could see uh, a few weeks ago that, he, that his uh, president, the Iranian president, the butcher of Tehran, Raisi, met with the leadership of Hamas, and we know that there were meetings in, uh, in uh, Syria and in Lebanon, if I remember correctly, with the other leaders of the uh, terror armies that surround Israel. So obviously, it's easy to understand that they try to uh, coordinate, you know, the military, the, the, the terror armies, the terrorists, the proxies of Iran in our region, they try to be coordinated as much as possible with Iran because for the long term, uh, their goal is uh, to try and destroy Israel with uh, the nuclear umbrella that Iran will uh, provide them with. That's the long term goal. Yes, please. Ambassador. Hi, Margaret Bashir with Voice of America. Ambassador, you mentioned normalization of relations. Does this mean uh, talks for Israel and Saudi Arabia to normalize are off the table indefinitely? And secondly, uh, President Biden and Prime Minister Netanyahu spoke today. Uh, Biden assured him of additional assistance to the IDF. Could you give us some details? Um, we are grateful to uh, the support we receive from the American administration, from President uh, Biden. We are fully coordinated uh, with them. I'm fully coordinated with Ambassador uh, Thomas Greenfield uh, here, uh, as I said, uh, regarding, for example, that we don't expect to see any other statement uh, coming from the Security Council unless it's the content that I just uh, mentioned. We don't want to get into specifics again, but uh, the administration is willing to assist uh, Israel, and uh, what, what was your first question? On normalization with Saudi yeah. Arabia, is that off yeah, the table? That's an important question. We, we don't see any uh, reason that uh, it should be off the table. Again, uh, we believe that there is a moderate, you know, there, there, there are moderate countries in our region that uh, wants to normalize relations and live in peace and uh, coexistence. And definitely Saudi Arabia is part of them. You know, when Saudi Arabia uh, was attacked uh, by the Houthis uh, or uh, when, uh, when the UAE was attacked by the Houthis, another Iranian proxy in our region, we always condemned it because I think that uh, all moderate countries who should stand together against radicalism, against uh, terrorism, and uh, obviously, that's what Iran wants to uh, achieve, to separate uh, us all. They definitely want to derail the chances of having um, uh, normalization between Saudi Arabia and Israel. We still uh, want it to happen. We'll do everything that we can to uh, live uh, in coexistence with all, all of our neighbors. We have time for one more question. Yes, Give them two. Ambassador Neta Tofik with the BBC. This format, closed consultations, do you want to see an open meeting of the Security Council? And to those countries who have said this will continue as long as there isn't a peace, a two-state solution, what's your reaction to their statements? It's either being naive or uh, more than being naive, because if I, I just describe to you and show you some quotes from the Hamas uh, charter, and uh, nobody, I don't remember anyone talking about achieving a peace agreement with Al-Qaeda or, uh, or with uh, ISIS. Peace cannot be achieved with uh, an organization that its sole only goal is to destroy you and to butcher each and every one of your citizens. So it's, it's, it's only about fighting terrorism and radicalism. So therefore, we thought uh, there is no room now to have uh, a real discussion of the Security Council. Again, we are in, 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 at a war now in, in Israel. Uh, we have hostages being kept in uh, Gaza. Uh, we have a constant threat. They are still indiscriminately firing rockets and missiles at our towns and cities. So we are fully, totally focused on achieving our goal to remove this threat from our citizens. So you don't see the purpose of an open 
meeting. I just want to make sure that I have that. I correct. don't see any any reason now to hold a pro, uh, an open meeting. Exactly. One more question. Yes, please. Yeah, on uh, on hostages, there are reports. Uh, Paolo Mastrolilli with the Italian Daily La Repubblica. On hostages, there are reports. Hostages. There are reports of a possible deal in exchange of uh, restoring electricity, the freedom for uh, children and women. Are you willing to consider something like that without getting into details? We're, we're not dealing. We're not even dealing with it uh, right now. As I said, we are not going to share any information or intelligence publicly. Uh, I, I believe uh, you will see that Israel is uh, determined, as I said, to bring back our uh, boys, girls, babies, uh, grandparents who were uh, taken forcefully to Gaza, and we are determined to obliterate the, terror, uh, the terrorist infrastructure there that is threatening all of us and the future of Israel. Thank you very much.